Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Matters webcast, an edition from Kaspersky Lab. I am here with a special guest today, all the way from Spain, uh, Mr. Vicente Diaz, to talk about banking malware and some of the issues he's been seeing and researching over the years, uh, specifically in his region and around the world. So Vicente, uh, thank you for coming. Thank you. So talk to us a little bit about, in general terms, uh, what are some of the issues you're seeing around banking malware that's specific to Spain? And in a little bit, if you can explain a little bit how that's different from what you're seeing in other parts of the world, for instance, in the USA or some other parts of Europe. Okay, banking malware is one of the most prevalent threats to everybody because it tries to steal your money from your bank. So it's very worrisome for everybody to be infected with this kind of malware. Um, it is usually spread using exploit kits. Right. They are distributed in a lot of servers around the world. So if you go into this exploit kit, you just co it depending on your countermeasures in your computer. They usually use a lot of zero-day attacks in right. PDF format, against Windows, against right. your browser, wherever. So the exploit kits that we're, we've been reading about and, and monitoring over the last, that's all intertwined with banking malware. They're being used for, for a variety of reasons, fake AV, some other pieces of malware but it's a big part of what distributes banking malware. Yes. Not only in Spain, but in other parts of the world. Everywhere. If you are uh, developing a banking malware, you probably want to consider acquiring some exploit kits, distribute right. them, so your banking malware is as uh, right. infecting as many. It's a big, big part yeah. of the ecosystem. Yeah. So how, how exactly does, uh, uh, how is banking malware, in, especially in Spain, let's talk about your region yes. specifically, how, how is it perpetrated? Is it the same as we see in the US where it's just through the browser, they hijack your username and password and get into your bank account? Or is there anything different that you guys are seeing in Spain? There are, <clears throat> there are common things among all different banking malwares, but in each different region, the banking malware adapts itself for being the most uh, dangerous as possible. Right. Also, they only go so as sophisticated as they need at a minimum basis. So they don't develop many advanced features if they don't need to. Uh, for instance, we see different levels of sophistication in banking malware, let's say in the U US, in right. Brazil, in China, and in Europe, only depending on the countermeasures that the banking application is performing against this kind of fraud. Right, so the, the level of sophistication is directly attributable to some of the security measures banks have in place. Yes, it's right. like an ecosystem. They only go one step farther than the defenses, right. Right. even if they have the capability of going farther than this. Right, uh, and a big, uh, one of the biggest defenses banks have put in place is two-factor authentication. Yes. Uh, you know, people walk around with tokens, some people get it on their cell phones. Uh, and in Spain, as I understand, you guys use SMS yes. for authentication. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about how, how, does, how is banking malware perpetrated and how are they getting around this two-factor authentication? If, if, for instance, I need to get an SMS uh, authentication code on my phone first before I get into my banking, uh, before I can log in mm -hmm. uh, legitimately to my bank account, how are uh, malware guys getting around that? Explain that in a little more detail for me. Yes, um, it depends. Uh, greatly on how this SMS thing is implemented. It could be that you need an SMS to log into your account, or you need uh, an SMS text to auto chase a transaction, whatever. But the fact is that as the PCs and mobile are getting more closer, we are seeing how this two-factor authentication is being bypassed in some sense. For instance, we saw last year with SUS, once you get infected, it asks you for your mobile number when you try to enter into your banking application, like this So one. Zeus or the Trojan itself changes the web page yes. and asks for something entirely different. Yes, imagine you are entering into your bank account, you are just in, and you are being asked for some details, like your mobile number. This is something useful, so you just put your mobile number there, <clears throat> and then you receive an SMS into your mobile with a link. Once you follow this link, your mobile, depending on the model, is infected. Mm -hmm. So when you get an SMS, this SMS will be redirected to another person. Ah. In, this, in this sense, it is bypassing two-factor authentication because if you got your PC infected and your mobile infected as well, you have no way... It seems very complicated though. It seems like there's multiple layers of infection that must be uh, completed successfully before you can have a successful uh, 
yes. bank intrusion. Because you have to infect the user. Mm -hmm. Then you have to infect his mobile device. Yes. And then you have to tie those two together. Is that, am, I get, am I getting it accurately? Yeah, uh, uh, these are like proof of concepts trying to okay. bypass this kind of defenses. But yeah. I expect this to be more and more uh, prevalent, yeah. Yeah, prevalent in the future because different devices can have the potential of right. infect other devices that they are connected to. So for instance, if you connect your mobile device into your computer just to download some pictures right. or you whatever. You can cross infections that way. Yes, we expect to see that in the future. Are all banks in Spain and, and throughout some parts of Europe implementing this two-factor authentication using SMS or are they using different, different techniques? How are banks responding to this threat? The best response could be, for instance, using a token, a right. physical dispositive that you connect into your computer. But it depends greatly on the bank, on how many customers they have, so it is costly for them to develop such a solution. Right. SMS is pretty uh, cheap, so it's okay for them to distribute it among their customers. Uh, it is easy for all mm -hmm. the customers because they have the mobile and they don't forget the token, right. whatever. Right. But in different countries, they are taking different measures. And it's more like a best effort of the banking industry in every country right. to defend against these threats. For instance, we see many different defenses in the mm -hmm. UK than in Spain. It depends mainly on how the banking industry is losing money with fraud and mm -hmm. how they want to protect the customers, what they think that won't be very uh, annoying for the customers. Right and things like that. Something as simple as possible. Let's yes. just end up quickly, uh, wrap it up quickly with one, one bit of advice you give to online bankers, in, let's say in Spain, online bankers in Spain. What's the one thing they should absolutely be careful with? What's, what's the one tip you want to leave them with? I will say that for banking industry, it's very good advice just to go for the best solution available in the market and to educate their users as much as possible. They are not giving any figures of how much they are losing. They are not making it public. So everybody thinks that everything is safe, but probably this is not the best solution for the customers to be aware of this kind of fraud. Thank you very much, Vicente. And thank you for watching another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab.